Jack Lee Oh my god! His <laughs> girlfriend didn't like me, so he had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> The most important point of the story was missed out. <laughs> What? I knew it! Oh my god! <laughs> he just woke up from his nap, so he was like, ah. "Nappy time." Are you seeing anyone right now? Conversations. Oh my God! Hi. Okay. okay, those of you watching, there is no explanation for why we are laughing. I remember the fact just before we started, Karima took this huge bottle of water, <laughs> took a huge sip. Show us your bottle, Karima. Nice. Stay hydrated, guys. I'm an influencer. Oh, good, you being a good influence in society. Thank you. Oh no. Okay, so Karima, I've been following you since 2020. Uh, because one of my friends sent one of your videos, the convent school girl ones, and we were like so relatable because I went to a convent school as well. I went to an all girls school. Uh, so I was like, oh, so much fun! So I've loved your work, and I've always found you interesting. But the thing that made me we go like, I need to talk to Karima. Mm-hmm. Like she's such an interesting person. Is I read somewhere that you're a debating legend, that you're right, and I was like, you are such a like crazy person on the <laughs> internet, funny, you know, like the don't take yourself seriously, and you do debating. Like that is so cool. How did debating happen? I was debating since school. Like I was debating, I was only doing this. This was my advent into not feeling shy in front of an audience. Mm-hmm. Was when I was in class two, I started doing elocution. Okay. Uh, because some girls backed out, and so I was used as a replacement, and I ended up winning. And then I just started doing public speaking, mm-hmm. and that's how I think I feel confident to do social media also. What do you remember? Do you yeah. remember what your first speech was on that class two elocution? I remember the poem. It was uh, "Get Out of Bed" by Diane Zed Shore, mm-hmm. and it was about. It ended with a principal cannot go to miss school. So the whole poem is about the guy being like, "I don't want to go to school today, man," and then at the end he's like, ah, "But I'm the principal." So that was my <laughs> class two. I can narrate the poem like literally. I was in my class four poem, and there was one more in class nine. All of them I remember. Did you do it like with a in a funny way? Was that how you were confident on stage? Yeah, it was supposed to be like voice modulation and expression with only your upper body. So I mean, that's kind of what we do, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great practice. <laughs> and, So I was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you debated a lot in DU, right? What's the debating circuit like? Is it all like serious people, like very focused on getting into politics and stuff like that? Yeah, DU debating is quite. Uh, people are very serious about it, is what I will say. Mm-hmm. They're very like, this is gonna be fruitful to us as a whatever. And so that part, I was a bit like less relaxed. But uh-huh. apart from that, yeah, like parliamentary debating and learning how people are so like you know discussing different things and also arguing topics that I didn't believe in from another mm-hmm. perspective was very different for me, which I think made me into a much more open person. Mm-hmm. You also debated a lot. Yeah, I did in school oh. and in college. So uh debating again was like a very serious thing so I always have a lot of respect for people who debate because it's really hard to do and mm-hmm. especially to appear convincing about something you don't actually personally stand for yeah. and not get chased by the other person's argument and then finding a counter and like giving that back it's amazing 
I was part of this competition called Ver no. Battle. It's very big in Karnataka. It's like a oh. huge thing, oh. and uh, I did not win. It was very very intimidating for me. So I have huge respect for people who debate because it's really really hard to do. It was parliamentary. or like a... no it was like they would give you a topic it was a very simple oh. debate like they'd give you a topic um for example uh you children need to learn through pain or something like that mm. uh and then you pick either for wow. or against <laughs> yeah something like like some some topic like that and then these kids from very fancy bangalore schools mm. would be very well prepared they'd have the mentors mm. me and my friend were like what will we talk about yeah okay mm. let's do something we'll do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i get that cuz i went from a like a not very well known school to a well known school in class 11 and 12 mm-hmm. and the difference was like wow like they were like prepping since they were birth i think uh huh and in my old school they were just like oh my god you are soaking a whole sentence in english just go for this competition <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i feel that <laughs> I had never auditioned. <laughs> yeah. Then, nice. Then. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did your BA in English. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I didn't even start my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> like then, then what happened? <laughs> no, no. I have to ask you this also. Oh, okay, so, did you did your BA in English literature from yes. Hindu University DU? Yeah. Uh, it's one of the top universities in India. Was that always your academic dream to study at Hindu College? I no, I don't think so. I don't think I had academic dreams as such when I was studying for boards. I was just—I mm-hmm. really don't mean to sound annoying, but I don't know how I got marks, and mm-hmm. it just so happened that they came. <laughs> I'm sure I studied. I'm not saying that I didn't study, but I was the most like. I I do have ADHD. I keep forgetting I have been diagnosed, and then I'm like, oh my god, I'm joking about it. No, I've been diagnosed with it. So I really used to have a distraction problem, and so when I got like really great marks, I just applied to DU because everybody was like, yeah, now nah, you gotta go because we I couldn't afford to go abroad. Mm-hmm. So this was like the next best thing to just go to this ranked really great. So honestly mm-hmm. speaking, I researched on DU after I got marks. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was amazing. Like I, I liked it. I'm glad I went there. What was it like moving from Kolkata to Delhi, though? Was there like a culture shock for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was Tell so. You. <laughs> I was like, why are you screaming? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> so, and everybody's so big. Like, I'm not, maybe you're small. <laughs> I'm five feet, dude. Oh But damn! But in Calcutta, everyone's a bit smaller. I feel like mm-hmm. so, just I'm the size in Calcutta. They don't mean it. Like they'd be like, "Okay, that's fair." Yeah, yeah. Oh, book a chola, and the other will be like book a chola, and then they'll go far away. Okay, <laughs> like that's it. Delhi was just like every second Uber driver was like, "I will kill your firstborn." So <laughs> that way, yeah, sure. And otherwise, also like nobody is listening to the Beatles as a four-year-old in Delhi. That mm-hmm. Calcutta people are just like shoved into their heads because yeah. we still live in two thousand one. <laughs> so all that is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that food is good. Bombay, I would say. <clears throat> not Bombay yet. is better food than Delhi. No, that's what Bombay mm-hmm. is. <clears throat> so on the way there, हो जाएगा. Not yeah. not yet. Calcutta is better. I heard Calcutta has amazing street food. Mm. Where, where are you from, Delhi originally? I'm uh, fully originally. I'm from Mangalore. <laughs> <laughs> originally, my ancestors are from Kerala, <laughs> but I grew up in Mangalore. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. I remember now the video that you and Shakshi had made. I think. Ah, uh, Shakshi Shetty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Have you met her in Bombay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a little one party night also once. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cute. That's the fun part of being in Bombay. You meet so many other content creators, right? And you like all the virtual friends are now in person happening. Yeah, yeah. That's very nice. Like quite an intermingling. But honestly, like I don't think people meet with the intention to collaborate as such. I don't think people like I think people are just becoming friends, and that's that's cute. good. That's the best yeah. part of it, right? If you're meeting just for work, then it's not really like yeah. Fun. Yeah. What's it like living in Bombay now? Um it's it's a lot. Like mm-hmm. like I I thought I would, I've come to Calcutta for a couple of weeks because my parents have moved houses. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm here. But uh Bombay is very like it's too much for somebody who's lived in Calcutta and in Delhi. It's like Mhm. uh it's like it's as congested as calcutta could be but as fast as delhi is without the mm-hmm. entirety of the metro system so i'm just like why are we like killing ourselves over this city you know but <laughs> at the same time i get it like i really understand the energy is different the moment you mm-hmm. step out of the plane it feels like you're in delhi all that is true <laughs> like it makes sense i get it it is the best in the country i would say but yeah it's been nice it's been nice it's been a bit wow um i see the love bit... of mumbai is just <laughs> coming out like that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good only <laughs> i'm really trying to convince myself to tell you. <laughs> like yeah it, it's good no <laughs> yeah you know all my delhi friends who have moved to bombay hate it like absolutely hate it because they are mm-hmm. like jagah hi nahi hai people up you know like mm-hmm. um, always busy always going around and people from bombay are like delhi people are so rude uh, they are so angry they fight with you all the time mm-hmm. and uh, me in the middle i'm like mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> what <are> nice what <laughs> <laughs> nice they forget that there's like a south and east region of the yeah. country yeah and these to keep telling me people are like you have a very uh, bombay accent like hey guys the entirety of the region of east exists and we all talk <laughs> like this mm. like <laughs> relax <laughs> everything is breech candy hospital for some reason that's the line oh, mark Oh, I thought it was all about Bandra. Cause my idea of Bombay is just from like jokes that people make, like, "Oh, I was from Bandra, what?" Or like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you live in Panvel, or what?" And I'm like, I don't know what those places are, but I get the reference. You, <laughs> you've been no to Bombay. I've been like on visits, but I haven't got to a point where I know that Bandra means this or you're from Kolaba means that. Like, okay, like that, it. I don't have a sense. It's only from people's jokes that I'm like, huh? I'll just, oh yeah, they've been catching it so much that now you feel like you're part of the joke, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what again, Bombay people and Delhi people think there's nobody else in the country. They're <laughs> just like, this is our joke. You listen to our joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I wanted to talk to you because I knew there would be this would be like a fun conversation. <laughs> I know I'm busy like you know feeling I'm on a video call just like chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you started creating content in 2020, right? You mm-hmm. Okay, wait, wait. Let me back up a bit. It was the pandemic. You moved in with your sister who was in Gurgaon? Yes. And you mentioned somewhere that you carried what just five shirts because you thought the lockdown was going to end very quickly. Yes, in a week. <laughs> <laughs> So what was it like spending the entirety of lockdown in one apartment with your sister? Oh, we wanted to kill each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I can imagine. I <laughs> and in the start that we were sharing a room because she lived in a flat with other people. Mm-hmm. So she was also working in Gurgaon so now I'm sitting in her room and she's just like you have to stop doing these characters to me because I was going insane. Uh-huh. And so she was like just record and just mm-hmm. do whatever you want and then it started like that like it literally just started like that and then eventually one girl left i think and i was able to use one room but that just had a 
really uncomfortable mattress and some old sheets and like a desk and that's it that was the whole room so i was really living life over there genuinely i don't know how else i would have spent the lockdown so i can't really determine what i else i would have done in that situation mm-hmm. but i think it was nice because my sister and i got close cuz we have an age gap quite a bit so how many years seven years so <laughs> Same. Yeah. Me and really? my sister too. Yeah, seven years. Yeah. Young. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> We are quite true. Uh... Then where is she now? She's my sister's in the US and uh yeah, I I went and visited her like last month and I call oh. her every single morning now. From yeah. we used to fight like crazy when we were younger. Yes. And then now and you're like, like exactly what mm-hmm. lockdown did for me also that only uh-huh. we used to fight and now we're like oh <laughs> it's really nice time. seeing you in her reels also oh she's in manali she seems, yeah she seems like a very like that sensible older sister <laughs> who's also like fun <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> kushboo if you're watching this <laughs> <laughs> i promise <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a content creator, a debater, and now also an actor. Woo! Ooh. I really, <laughs> I really loved you as Kayanit in Wasaba Masaba. Oh, thank you. You were so, you were so funny, and you were like the punching bag for all of Gen Z. <laughs> nice hair, also. I was like, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> how how did that role happen that i just got an email like my management got an email and mm-hmm. they asked me to audition i had i was quarantining that time because i had just come back and this was in 2021 so my audition was like alone so i was just taking it like a cord like a reel so okay shooting masaba's part and i was shooting my part and then i was i was stitching them together And then I sent. Oh, it. you acted both parts. Yeah, because I didn't have anybody to give me cues, because I was right. quarantining, and they really yeah. liked that. So they were like, oh. "It was very cool that you did that, because you brought in your content ideas." Mm. And and I was like, "Guys, right. I just I was just quarantined." <laughs> 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 But no, that was fun. Will you ever Will you ever put that video out? Your audition tape. Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. we're so fun. Yeah, that's true. Okay, okay. I love watching the audition videos of like people who audition for the office, and you know, you see them when the, how they were then. Mm-hmm. You see what they did to get there. So it's like as a audience member, I would love to see that, especially since you played both roles. That's true. Okay. Oh, it is going to be one year since Masaba came out in July. So maybe I'll just post it on the one year. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like going from filming by yourself, where you feel very comfortable in your own room, to filming on a set with like hundred people looking at you? That's where this debating shit came in mm-hmm. use now because I was like, okay, this is like performing, and mm-hmm. that was like, I mean, that is still like you're performing, you know. without an audience i was like okay there's an audience now to this performance mm-hmm. and that's okay cuz also like after a point you realize that apart from the director and the people who really need to be concerned with your dialogues and performance the others are not interested in what you're doing cuz they have other things to do on that set right so they Correct, are yeah. just concerned about how the light is falling they are just concerned about what is the art is looking fine so i was like okay mm-hmm. none of these people are here just for me like this is not about me and then i was just like able to break that down and first i was nervous like the first scene i shot was with masaba and milan soman uh wow. and <laughs> ever of any acting thing ever so my director sonam nayar she came to me in the vanity mm-hmm. van and she was like do you know what continuity is and i was like yeah yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> and when she was like Do you know what continuity is? <laughs> and I said no. Maybe I don't. <laughs> maybe I don't. Maybe I I do. Who knows? Why don't you tell me? 
and then yes. she told me and she was like just tell me what you don't know so that like, i absolutely nobody has taught me anything i had this has mm-hmm. just happened i was what is happening and then it was nice like everybody around me was really nice so it was doable was it intimidating like meeting all of these people that you've seen on screen so far and you know of them and then you're like acting with them and people who have experience acting and you're new right was like how did you get over that kind of feeling of okay will i match up i don't think i had thought about it as much which is good right that's really good yeah yeah because i don't think of it as a goal to match up to like i can't match up to somebody who's been here for like 20 years how will i do that mm-hmm. and so i don't think about it only and even if it's a person who has been here for two more years than me i'm like that is a lot of experience you know what i'm talking yeah. about right mm-hmm. so then i don't think about comparing at all and that's helpful because you age so fast when you start like posting stuff yeah well, okay how was it <laughs> being in a top dio college like i wanted what was that ex- were people like very competitive around you it was like watching a slow demise of all the toppers from the country just <laughs> like degenerating through the years <laughs> like all of us <laughs> just collectively like everybody's in the room you turn around and you're like 96 97 98 because you had yeah. to have gotten that much to go- get in and mm-hmm. then you're just like what are they doing now because now they're just like slowly letting it all shed <laughs> including myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah people were still like aware of what they had come in with but i think mm-hmm. after a point it just got very um uh, not glorified what is the opposite right. of that uh where did you I yeah know. i guess <laughs> where did you, you know, do college wait sorry i studied in bangalore only What? then i did my higher studies in chennai okay where did you yeah. study i also studied literature ah, but in karnataka you're telling me all this <laughs> Why are you asking? Yeah, just the same thing, no return. <laughs> so in Karnataka, there's a concept of a triple major. So I did it in literature, psychology, and journalism. Like in Christ, they have this offer also. Correct. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I wanted to do exactly that, by the way, when I was mm-hmm. applying to Christ. This combination. You also applied to Christ. Yeah. I applied to Pune, Imagine. Bangalore, and Delhi, and then I ended up in Delhi. Oh, nice! Oh, damn! But I was. But you know what? You were talking about all the toppers being in the same class. They say this thing about people who get into IITs because um, a lot of them have sort of an identity crisis once they join because all of them have had been toppers and the best of the best in their class and like always been praised for it. but now they join a class where everyone stoppers and then suddenly you feel like your self esteem being chipped away cuz everyone else seems to be smarter than you which is a feeling you're not used to did you see that happen to people around you no i don't think it was like an iit situation like it wasn't as intense cuz there were other things to channel that kind of focus that you were used to giving to your books so you channeled it on to debating theater or whatever But yeah, I saw myself not be as interested as I was in school, I guess, in academics, because mm-hmm. I was just like, okay, now, like, hope yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think people don't really realize the importance of extracurriculars, yeah. especially like debating is seen as uncool and nerdy and all of that. Yeah. But like you mentioned, like it's helped you so much in life, especially content creation and even acting because it's given you that confidence, right? Yeah. So, you also watching. debating is cool, guys. It's very. We cool. are the coolest <laughs> basketball people. Where you at? <laughs> This is why they think we are uncool. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> I'm quite nerdy. Yeah, I would say. Are you a nerd also? I was called that all through school. 
Huh. I used to be very like hurt by it. Like guys, I'm not a nerd. Okay, I'm actually cool. But now I'm like, yeah, so I'm uh, cool. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> And like I'll hyper focus on what you have just said, and I will look it up, and then I will look it up yeah. even more, and then keep looking yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I feel that. I feel you on that. <laughs> What's your favorite food, Satya? <laughs> Why are you asking? Just like that. <laughs> okay, my. I feel like we're on a. Uh, I can't swiggy to think of oh, any. <laughs> Shy. Uh, <laughs> I was ready to send out my address, like here, yeah. copy paste, <laughs> ready. <laughs> hey, if you'd like to send me a PR package, <sighs> oh, all that is reduced so much now because oh, I've moved. Yeah. Unless someone really, really wants to collaborate, and they're like, "It's fine, we'll bear the shipping costs, good and bad also, but it's, yeah. it's fine only." What is it like now that you're international? Now that I'm international. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> it's it's uh, it's hmm it's different it's like starting all over again i feel cuz now when i attend events it's like oh. i'm in the new gate and i have to go like nobody knows who i am right otherwise in oh, india like people God. recognize you they're like oh yeah you yeah. you know other content creators kind of know who you are easy you say easy do no? yeah yeah <laughs> 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 so now it's like oh hi you know I'm a content creator oh. I was back in India I just moved so it's it's nice because it's like pushing I'm not a very right. um, extroverty person but this is forcing me right. to become one like to go up to people and talk and uh, like become make That's friends nice. so it's nice I wanted to ask you about this okay Kayanat as a character in the beginning she's like the negative one because. you know all the gen z stuff and annoying and looking down but she has a nice redemption arc at the end where she is very supportive of masaba that scene in the end at the fashion show that she's clapping and stuff like that so you feel like she is a nice like she's just misunderstood as a character um what do you feel people misunderstand about you personally mm. Mm. <laughs> let's think about it I don't think that many people have very wild assumptions about me. Mm-hmm. I think um, people are quite. One would be that I'm from Bombay, which I have gotten too many times. Mm-hmm. That I was born and raised there only. Uh, what else? I think you are like how you are in your content. You're pretty much similar in real life as well, right? Yes, that is true. That is, yes, I'm stealing that. Yeah, so totally. Like people are. Like, <laughs> <laughs> people think that when I behave like this in real life, they are like, "Tu tu ekda mamne badi ho jana hai yar." Oh. <laughs> yes, guys. It started like that. That is uh-huh. why I'm here. And other than that, I think they're very confused about where I've been. Like I was in Delhi, Gurgaon, Calcutta, Bombay. Mm-hmm. Where are my parents from? And also, people really like to like understand your background every time they ask yeah. you questions. So I think that way people have tried to determine like what my background is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> and people. confused about religion social class economic class i think people just have assumptions about these things in general about everybody so i think they have these assumptions about me as well but they're all wrong <laughs> <laughs> what what is the wild. what is the uh, facts about your background if someone's like if your followers are curious like who is karima where is she from so i've always grown up in calcutta Then I went to Delhi for college. Then I lived in Gurgaon. We've covered it actually. We've discussed yeah. it. Then I went to Gurgaon, and then I went to Bombay, and then I'm now in Calcutta, and then I'm going back to Bombay. That's my current tea of the life. And I was in a girls' school till class ten, and then I was in a co-ed school from eleven and twelve, which was fucking wild. Oh, wait. Was... <laughs> tell me yeah. about that. What was that transition like? I thought I was in a jungle for the first day. I think. <laughs> Because I was like, do I have to be around these boys the whole day? And then I was really like perturbed because I couldn't scream like, 
लुक एट माई स्कर्ट सी इफ आई स्टेन इट लाइक स्क्रीम इट और जस्ट वॉक इन टू अ क्लास एंड बी लाइक एंड यू नो दैट टाइम द बॉयज हैड नॉट बिकम सो अवेयर of things also so they were mm-hmm. also a bit like mm, what's a pad and okay so <laughs> you know like <laughs> just like there were few boys who were like absolutely you've got your uh. got your period let me just like rub your belly a little bit or something there was like few men i would okay. say that time in the olden days before uh. the uh, instagram post came along teaching them how to be nice mm-hmm. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh yeah that was really wild and then i was like so what do i do when i have a crush because i have to now see them every day yeah. so i started combing my hair which was quite like i never used to comb my hair that uh-huh. was a big problem because i wanted curly hair so i just had stopped combing <laughs> and so it- <laughs> <laughs> you wanted dreadlocks you mean <laughs> i that's what my mom kept saying and i was like no mom look it's giving me texture Uh-huh. and when she was like kariba you barely have like she just want to now she's a little oily but like mm. otherwise i swear to god there's a little wave somewhere there <laughs> okay uh-huh. so i stopped combing my hair and i would have a crush on i had a crush on my friend who i'm still friends with now and uh, i was like we have to go for prom together and <laughs> oh you had that wow mm, and then he didn't turn up for prom he showed me up Oh, no. After two years of promising that we'll go, so I was like, "This is I should have never come to a co-ed school." Correct. Because boys just disappoint you. And you're still so friends was, with him. Not bad. Yeah, like I was like, "Did he have a girlfriend?" His girlfriend didn't like me, so he had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Most important point of the story was missed out. <laughs> Nicely hidden. <laughs> Okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> Why he didn't show up? His girlfriend probably was like, "If you go, I'm gonna break up with you." <laughs> I think they did also after okay. a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you know, <clears throat> even I went from all girls school to co ed in eleventh and twelfth. Yeah, in Karnataka we oh, have this concept. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I used to cry a lot in eleventh twelfth. I think. I don't know what it triggered in me, but I would cry around my guy friends a lot. I don't know if that was my past pick me energy, mm-hmm. or I think I was just like very okay with crying in front of them. Because mm-hmm. my dad is the more emotional one in my family. So okay. if I'm crying or something, I'm usually going to him, and he's he's more sympathetic. So mm-hmm. he's the one who's going to be like nunu nunu nunu. But Aww. so I think I just started crying in front of the guys in school because I expected them to do it, and I just kept getting disappointed. And now I've stopped crying in front of men altogether. <laughs> don't cry in front of men. Yeah, they <laughs> actually they don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, your dad is too cool, though. I love his collection of he collects vintage items, right? Wow. Yes, he does. Yeah, it was. It's really cool, and I think oh I think he has great taste in music. Like I could just sense, like you grew up listening to a lot of classic music because of him. Yes, in the in he plays the record in the mornings also because you have to I keep playing know. them. Oh my god, you have like a record player with all the vinyls. Yes, multiple wow. ones. So now he just runs them on different days, and we get to hear these music. Nice suit. Very cool. Mm. I love seeing your reels with yeah. your dad. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's so just... damn funny. Yeah, he's funnier than I am, hundred by miles and miles. Like I'm half as funny as him. He is the original actor content. I really do. You feel like this? Like a lot of times you meet somebody, your dad's age, and you're just like this uncle could have been a content creator. If they were born yeah. in our generation, yeah, know, like yeah, a I lot of people way, are just huh? yeah. I feel that way about your dad. I feel that way about Tanisha's dad also. Mm. And I'm waiting for a day when both of them can be in a video together because that would oh be God. amazing. That, that would be, be like quite iconic. 
amazing that's not untrue that's not untrue what's the most like valuable life lesson that you've learned from your parents don't talk about or express like basically my dad has this rule to not eat on the road or not mm-hmm. to laugh very loudly when you're in a public space or do okay. a lot of pda because he's like you don't know what the other person is going through uh okay. so don't eat in front of a person because you think because they might be starving don't mm-hmm. laugh too loud in front of a person because they might be going through something mm-hmm. uh so just keeping those things in check has made me very empathetic person in general because uh, when you're a since you if you were a child you're thinking about oh my god what if the person opposite me is going through a really tough time you just mm-hmm. generally become uh, susceptible to thinking about another person in a situation that you're present in so mm-hmm. that i think really taught me to not put myself in the spotlight because i mean as a content creator yourself you would we think about ourselves a lot right yeah and a lot. we are the brand we are the whatever so i guess thing just getting in touch with that reality is very nice to know that i have that in me all the time that i will always be able to empathize with somebody across from me yeah wow no it it kind of comes <laughs> across in your content also because you seem like a very grounded person and when you see your reels with your family i think that also comes across like all of you are very chill and i feel like all of you keep each other in check in a way yeah yeah it's quite a cuz my mom from bareilly which is okay. in up mm-hmm. my dad's originally from punjab but he he's been living like five generations have been in calcutta my mom is second generation calcutta mm-hmm. so they have that calcutta witty humor but they also have brought from their family so my mother is so sassy my god you will really like her actually yeah. personally i think mm-hmm. yeah like she really <laughs> i think you like her because her humor is very like yeah so then die <laughs> <laughs> you know very <laughs> british sitcom moment she's usually in oh okay okay yeah and she watches a lot of all this on that's mm. exactly her sense of humor which i find very like it's a very 14 year old stoner boy humor <laughs> that my mother has <laughs> uh. so <laughs> what about you what do you classify your sense of humor as actually i can't i can't think of what exactly i would say cuz i so i started following you when you started making the hindi translation videos obviously Haan. but that was the start though kind of what is it yeah i don't know actually i think my humor is kind of like i it's a irritating thing where i want to teach you something along the way like i don't want to make a joke for the sake of making a joke i want to be like what here's a new word in another language learn it <laughs> or like this is something about culture so that you won't like be prejudicial in your next meeting learn it <laughs> so, we were talking about your family and um, mm-hmm. i really 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 like this video that you had made um chusti anda uh, the one I that you made on smoke in india yes oh my goodness it was so good like okay all of you who are listening slash watching this um it's on the commune india youtube page please go check it out um it's okay i don't want to reveal too much but i have to tell you it is like a master class in writing about loss but in a light hearted way but at the same time oh. not diminishing that loss so absolutely like i watched oh, it and i was that's like that's so nicely put so, that actually is so nicely written. wow oh wow i going to introduce that now as <laughs> <And> that <laughs> you should Thank you. beautifully done um i wanted to know like are there any authors or books who have influenced your writing um yes so i started writing in 2013 i wrote my first poem and okay. it was called another today it was my first all nighter or something and we used to live in this house between a masjid and mandir which i referred to in that also so right. that was my first reference also in that poem i was like the temple bells and the azan sound together they were happening mm-hmm. it was very intense as a 12 year old child but uh then Writing never in the college. This time I used to read when I was younger. I started okay. with Goosebumps, 
as a baby what was your baby book nancy drew Uh, Enid Blyton, famous ah, by. Yes. I knew it. Oh my god! <laughs> I told you you like my mother. She's also yeah. famous by. Yeah. Oh, nice. Auntie Barry, I'm oh, coming to meet Secret you. Secret Seven, because uh-huh. that's more her. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you come. And who else? A lot of like this this girl. Of course, her Sally Rooney. Ooh. I watched that. You watched it? That um, I didn't watch yet. Normal people, mm, no. Mm. The book was like, <sighs> yeah, no. Nice. She's good, nice. but this is very recently, actually, very recent. I I think after I started studying literature, and then I did one year of masters also in English. Oh, in okay. But that was in Bombay. Uh, mm. then I left it. Um, but I think I just haven't gotten back to reading for love. Yes, because mm. it's been like even in class eleven, twelve, I had taken elective English, so I had literature, language, mm-hmm. and elective English. So I was just like, I can't read for fun. Also now, like I'm yeah. reading two novels a week. Like let's relax. Mm-hmm. So now, like after a huge gap, I've this is probably this Rumi book I picked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then I started with reading poems again. It just changes. I don't think I have a very strict writing inspiration. Hmm. But it's but nice, I like writing right? like, on people. Huh? You like writing on people. Yeah. What do you mean? Like writing about people and their nature, their experiences, my experience with them. I like writing about that. Hmm. Like now that you mentioned that you grew up being very empathetic, I kind of see that in your content as well because you observe people really well. I'm assuming that for rich and rich mother. <laughs> Oh, what is the character's name? Rich Auntie, Rich, rich Mom. Mom. Yeah, rich yeah, Mom, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that you knew a couple of people and you kind of mashed it together in a character. <laughs> and even that Bengali, what's her name? Jharni. Jharna. Oh, Jor- wow. Jharna. Yeah. Jharna. Jharna. That was two years ago, I think. You know oh, who God. showed me the video? Akash oh. did, and he oh. said, "Please tell." Yeah, he said, "Please tell Karima." This is my favorite video of hers. because he was like like he was like so accurate so correct so accurate oh akash is bengali no no he's he's punjabi but he's grown up in delhi and has a lot of like bengali oh friends oh my god cr park bro mm-hmm. yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You were talking about like short form content versus long form content right um i remember your uh, piece also on if privilege were a person you used to do those long form videos uh do you think you would ever get back to that maybe on youtube or something yeah that's exactly it i want to start it again on youtube i don't know if i'll ever get into youtube as a um blogger because mm-hmm. i've tried vlogging and it just doesn't come to me naturally mm-hmm. like you would think and i would think too that it would and i've recorded it but i just feel incredibly uh not in tune with what i'm making when i'm vlogging i feel like cuz i'm like this is so mm-hmm. like i'm drinking water right now how will i make this interesting i don't live that interesting a life that i'm going to be able to daily vlog you know yeah like but you know i realized that what will i vlog vlogs yeah. people people just want to see you how you live your life like even if you're just drinking water like i've watched vlogs where people are like i just woke up guys you know i'm having breakfast and this is my toast and i have a busy mm. day and i'm like cool like it's part of your life nice if someone can make it funny like even better but um if you really want to take up vlog- vlogging then do one and see how people respond to it then you'll get a better sense i guess The thing is, I've shot many, many of these, and I've uh-huh. edited them also, and then I've just never uploaded them. Like the number of YouTube videos that I've shot and just not uploaded are a bit, and now they're dated. Like they're very, very dated, so I can't really upload mm-hmm. them. But maybe I'll show you. <laughs> But that's one. <laughs> like I don't think I. <laughs> I don't think I consume a lot of uh, vlogging content. Also now, personally, mm-hmm. like I used to consume a lot more of it. Now I watch a lot of Jubilee and like interviews and like people oh, sitting together okay. and talking about something or like a commentary mm-hmm. situation. Commentary also has stopped. 
now mm-hmm. it's more like a real life people are talking to each other choosing things i don't know are you seeing anyone right now i'm so single i'm just i'm it's just i'm very single and very open to mingle i think at this point what's it like dating as a recognizable figure on dating apps it's a little awkward mm-hmm. cuz um it's like oh i've seen you on this so then i don't match mm cuz i'm like now that we already exist of strange like power dynamic situation yeah. um and then if they tell me later on after we have spoken mm-hmm. then i'm like so then you know so much about my life already cuz you have yeah. you might have zero posts on instagram but i have 800 almost <laughs> so you know like you can know whatever you you can know how my face is going to look at every angle how i look mm. like 6 months ago what haircut i got what eyebrow threading i did bro like you can really tell yeah. so i feel a bit like also uh, over exposed while talking to another person so then i'm like maybe like this is not going to happen as organically but it's okay like now i'm like no i'm not like kim kardashian also that is going to be that difficult so i thought i'd <laughs> not find anybody who will not know me at all they rarely it happens on dating apps also that people will see it and mm-hmm. also i'm quite like it'll take me like a while to start dating somebody properly because i've only dated like one two people in my life mm-hmm. one was in school and one was later on mm-hmm. so and take me some time to fully commit also yeah yeah i was yeah i think about that a lot because you know even when you meet someone in real life like you're meeting them for the first time and they're like oh i know so much about you and oh you did this you do that uh your husband's mm-hmm. name is this your dog's name is this and you kind of feel like <laughs> okay okay this person already knows me like yeah you know they're not going to try to get to know me for me like you no. already have an idea about me and then you kind of don't engage further um and especially like while dating um i you ever like like i was putting myself in the situation like if i was single like i would be on a dating app i would be scared like what if someone like takes a screenshot of my chats and puts them out like ha ha i was chatting with her look what she said you know like yeah yeah i'm a bit scared of that i'm sure people may have sent it to their friends at least if Hmm. No, I'm sure I've been screenshot because I have screenshot is only people. I'm like it's so casual to just <laughs> yeah. just screenshot send, bro. Let's go. It's like a factory <laughs> working setting going on. Once you match with someone, three group chats sent, and it's okay. Like I think I just but that that's true. Like you then conceal yourself. You're yeah always talking to the person with the perspective of being uh seen on a screenshot. Yeah. So that obviously limits how you interact. That's why I like meeting people in person. Like once I met this guy, and we met in public, and um, I was just like at the end of the night, I was just like great vibes. But I think we should be friends. And he was like, yeah, thanks for communicating, GM. Oh, nice. I was great. Yeah, and we had spoken for a sum total of like half an hour that day. Mm-hmm. I just happened to be in the area, so I went met, and then I came back. I was like vibes had been tested. Okay, but. uh yeah i think that's a good way that's a good way to balance it maybe you just meet them in person and you can a certain what the fuck is going on basically because mm-hmm. not much is currently in my love life <laughs> well, what do you what are some things that you look for in a partner he should be nice he should be <laughs> funny yaar <laughs> no You know what? I'll be the funny one. It's okay. <laughs> you need someone to laugh at your jokes, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And I need somebody with a different sense. I can't have. See, now, before it used to be all this, you know, nice, funny, whatever. Mm. Now it's more like the things that I don't want. I think. Right. Because mm-hmm. that's what is going. This girl very wisely was a journalist who entered mm-hmm. with when I was in college. she told me very wisely she was like date date as much as you want in your 20s mm-hmm. because that's what is going to make you realize what you actually don't want and that's Correct. what you want then mm. so i was like okay cool so now i'm like i don't want somebody to be competitive with me 
about mm-hmm. anything i don't want that competition situation uh i think now that i'm at this point of life that i want somebody for the long term i'm like has to be on the same level about certain things in life like where we're living finances mm. uh family morals children pets you yeah. know like all these things have to Important be like things. aligned yeah hmm. but these are very logistical things i'm just talking about i said they have to be a little charming i need mean, them to be charming you know <laughs> like i can't just be like yeah sure you're lovely i need to be like <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that is good. <laughs> okay, so a charming person who is not who is willing to give you your space and supportive of you, and uh, yes, yeah, no, I you know supportive also. I don't like, of course, yeah, but like not competitive in the sense. I can feel like people can get competitive while they're getting supportive also because then they're like, I am your first. Uh-huh. I've really been through some. <laughs> I'm like, actually, the fact that you said support is also problematic. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, who hurt you? Because <laughs> sometimes people when they want to support you, they don't want to do it that nicely. <laughs> oh, yeah, so... yeah. I think just a just a cool, chill, charm, charming person who knows what they are doing are ambitious. Mm-hmm. of their own desires and dreams and are down to just like marinate with me like two pieces of chicken breast nice analogy yeah <laughs> is it lunch time or something <laughs> no <laughs> half <Huh>? what <laughs> is it <laughs> cuz i got some lunch right here <laughs> oh nice you got that twix and everything oh you, oh Okay, my dog just came. Okay. Do you want to say hi? Hi! Oh my God, Kelly! I'm already excited. He just woke up from his nap, so he's like, ah. "Nappy time, Kelly. What's your name, Bubu? His name is Tonu." Don't you mind me, don't you go yeah. now? Yeah, that's exactly how it goes at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll set him down. Chill. You have been very vocal about um, taking therapy, and you said something very interesting, which is that you didn't wait until you reached a breaking point to take therapy. but you actually did it when you were starting to see signs of it and you were like you know i need to like tackle this right at the start um yeah. what are some things that you've learned in therapy that have really helped your life oh wow i have my therapy diary right here actually oh, wow <laughs> i okay. keep it now i started like right it's been two and a two years mhm two and a half years almost my therapist is actually leaving practice now this month So oh, I'm going to okay. change to a new one. Oh, very Scary. exciting. Hmm. But one is that, uh, but that's what that I've learned that I'm not, I'm not like losing my shit about my the fact that my therapist is also leaving. Because yeah. in therapy, I've been taught that no matter what the outcome is, there is nothing is going to come out of you getting panicky about it, mm-hmm. and like just breathing and not punishing myself. is a big mm-hmm. one because i think a lot of times even as gals in general we mm-hmm. are so used to like just taking the brunt of things a lot of time yeah that and also like just being like i'm so so i'm i'm so sorry yeah it's my I'm, fault yeah 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 so that has been quite an unlearning experience second i think would just be like if therapy just generally with this content world i think you tend mm-hmm. to compare yourself so often right because mm-hmm. everything is just on the internet so you don't really have to look it up um and it's just out there so i think comparing yourself and expecting yourself to change as per people's desires mm-hmm. has been a big problem for me and that has been tackled with therapy also and third is just honestly like all jobs these days just drive you insane mm-hmm. so a kind of like if the first thing that i did when i could afford it was get therapy 
Smart. And I was like, this is my, yeah, like this is an investment. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, this is my skincare. Like I'm going to do this. And mm-hmm. I really think people should look at it like that. Like it's a very nice form of self-care. You have this whole art. Like you have paid a person to listen to your problems. Like it's such yeah. a cool concept that people are willing to listen to you for it also. And they are <laughs> educated in how to deal with it. Correct. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's and they give there you those for you. Tools also, right? On how to cope with it. So that it's not just yeah. you ranting to someone, but then they give yes. you these tangible things that next time you face it, you're like, okay, I remember they said this. So I'm going to try like to implement this. 100%. So many of my like, own toxic patterns of dealing with myself have changed over time and I feel mm-hmm. a lot more mature than I was uh, before I would yeah. say and like, also I think being in this space of content creation there are a lot of things that we face that even if you want to talk to our friends or our partners about it they don't they will not completely understand it like if I tell someone like oh you know I'm feeling really bad because someone you know left a mean comment but they'll be like but there are so many nice comments ah. you're like but that, yeah. that one comment like really hurt me you know yeah so, and you need somebody to get to why in your childhood but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes yeah. to my therapist I'm like relax it's 12 p.m like you know you can't be talking about my childhood trauma right now and they're like <laughs> so Ima, it's been a while yeah. now <laughs> yeah just get to the point and when yeah. you sometimes, like, for me, when I feel like there are these things in the content creation world that I experience, but when I want to vocalize it, it sounds so mundane of a problem, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm not growing enough, or, oh, you know, I'm scared when people approach me in real life, like, I, I get a bit panicky, and I don't know how to deal with it. It sounds very silly, it sounds very stupid to be able mm-hmm. to share this with your friends. So, like, I started therapy because I was feeling like I can't deal with it and I my friends don't get it and it's not their fault because they can't relate to it so mm. then having to talk to someone who not only said like okay that's a valid concern but here are tools like how you can deal with the situation with then mm. I was like oh wow why didn't I do this sooner like why did I yeah, make myself yeah. suffer like this for so long <laughs> that's true and take and taking breaks also like when you're doing fine then you're like okay I'll be take care yeah. But then it suddenly falls and you're like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> and Can it's you so... book session? <laughs> <laughs> and also in our field, I think every all the work we do is out there for so many people. So if you're not yeah. working, then people hmm. can see that you're not working. Yeah. Right? It's a very strange place to be in that I guess only another content creator could understand. So mm. I think that's also why a reason why I started this podcast because I was like, I need to talk to more people in this field. Like, am I the only one feeling this mm. way about these things? That's a good idea, actually, to just also understand their perspective. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, actually, because we can't really talk to... No, I just agree. I don't have anything <laughs> to add to that. You had a TEDx talk where uh, you mentioned that you plan to study further. Is that still on the cards yes Abhi, mm. though, I would love to I would love to go somewhere Bahar and study literature do a masters and just want to get that done like even if I don't do anything with that degree which I would like to mm-hmm. actually at least like write something um, mm-hmm. but I want to do it I'm quite nice. excited that would be I don't not in a hurry I don't mind waiting but mm-hmm. so like save up some more and then mm. go I think another advantage of this field I guess is the money that you make because then you can be like okay now I can like self-fund my education because mm. say five years ago when I just looked at MA costs I was like <laughs> not, possible. Dream. not yeah. possible I cannot take up these loans etc so yeah that's that's you want an advantage You'll also go, you'll also study more. Uh, not, not now. I don't no. think so. But I had wanted to no. study food anthropology at SOAS in London. Uh, but the fees okay. were like 32 lakhs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's not like an MBA where you can like make that money back. It was just like a passion yeah. subject. 
that's so and like it's so irritating when people really will think about that as like a to sell some property and go i'm like what property what property <laughs> <Yala property."> exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know my father <laughs> just relax i keep saying relax these days you know you is it a, oh i say that a lot too so i didn't know, like, oh, relax okay relax i think everybody yeah. just needs to <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. not me who say it a lot it's people who need it mm mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to audience questions. I have three audience questions. Um, the first question is from Deepak from Jaipur. He asks, "What is one food item you cannot stand?" Cannot stand. Uh, like the loki only, no? Mm. The transparent one. Mm. Trans. I can't. I just the jelly consistency of it. Actually, can't. Also, like I don't like minced meat. I don't like when. any meat is compressed okay i'm just like what are you doing with it why are you mashing it i don't so like the the lotti kebab no. no no like i'll have it but that's not like i'm like <laughs> like even if it's from lucknow and all that i won't you know okay no, it's all about the me. not about the taste but about the texture right yes the texture yeah yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. second question Uh, this is from Geetanjali from Bangalore. She asks, if it wasn't for content creation or acting, what would you want? What would you have wanted to take up as a career? Hi, Geetanjali. I would love to be a journalist, as we have discussed today, uh-huh. and that has been my only dream apart from when I landed up in this. So, I like a print journalist. journalist. Yeah, I want to say write or even get into TV journalism. I was okay with that also. Mm-hmm. Then then I was like, "Huh, why was I okay with TV journalism?" And then I was like, <laughs> "Ah, you did want to get interviewed too, I guess." Oh, okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Question number. <laughs> we are so nerdy. We are just like, ah, TV journalism. <laughs> right? We have cracked some <laughs> really sexy jokes. <laughs> this interview is like eighty percent giggles, twenty percent conversation. It's like edit, edit, edit. <laughs> no, no, I'll keep it, and I like the, I like the rawness of like a proper conversation. I don't like to edit it too much, so oh. there will be a lot of giggles for whoever's listening. Mm, <laughs> okay, last question is from Ananya from Mysore. She asks, "What's your Monday motivation?" <laughs> you are laughing what is monday motivation is an oxymoron there is no such thing as monday motivation well we are talking on a monday <laughs> as today you were my motivation in diary i would like to dedicate this monday to waking up for you only cuz i really have like I, first of all my sleep cycle is i sleep late and i wake mm-hmm. up late and i can't i can't function in the morning ever mm-hmm. uh monday motivation for me would probably genuinely be if i have to see somebody else and it's supposed to be a thing like <laughs> i got it monday motiv- i think monday motivation you should plan something for the morning Mm-hmm. and that gets you out of bed much quicker and plan something that i think i would enjoy like sometimes i'll plan like a a self care situation on sunday night and then i feel very excited to wake up on monday so sunday mm-hmm. night is usually when my monday motivation begins as a night owl mm-hmm. so yesterday Planning night is really yeah yeah i was yeah. like let me do some skin stuff <laughs> You know, but, but I yeah. think if you actually get a cat, that would be your Monday motivation. Because pets, make sure you wake up early because you have to feed them. I'm ready when I have yeah. stability in my life, and mm-hmm. <laughs> I will get it. Are you doing more acting gigs in Bombay? Yes, I shot for one more show. It's gonna mm. come out this year, and uh, there's another one. Girls Hostel was getting shot. Okay. 
I don't know if I can say this. So, girls are also doing four. Okay. Yeah. What is okay? You can let me know later if you want me to cut it out. Yeah. But what is the show that you mentioned first? Like, what kind of a show is it? Uh, that I just can't talk about. I will tell you personally for sure. Cool. But it was. It's just like it's fun. Like you'll see me in a different light. Is what oh. I would say. Okay. Exciting. Yeah. So end of this year, we will see some exciting Hopefully, stuff. Hopefully, I think they, they don't tell us after we are done shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah no I think this year is coming out. Awesome. Looking forward to the upcoming projects. Thank you so much Karima for coming. This is so fun. This is such a nice conversation. I know. <laughs> I really had a nice time like See objectively. <laughs> objectively I will take that. <laughs> okay nerd. Bye nerd. Bye. Thank you so See much. you. Okay, everyone who's watching, please follow Karima on all her social channels. Her YouTube is starting up soon, so I'm going to put a link to that. By the way, did, did you did, did have you privated a lot of your previous videos on YouTube? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I thought as much because when I was doing research for this and I was seeing your older content, I saw mm. a couple of posts which said, "Ha, huh, full video on YouTube," and then go to YouTube and there's nothing there. What is this doka? I'll unprivate them <laughs> for you only. Thanks. While I watch your rap now. Oh so. no! <laughs> I should go private that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank Have you a good for Monday. This conversation. Thank I you. genuinely had a great time. Thanks for starting Jumma conversation. Yay! Thank you. Bye. New episodes of Chuma Conversations with your favorite content creators will be out every Wednesday so make sure you click on that follow or subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode when it comes out have a great week ahead bye